When an object is moving in circular motion, it is essential that there is a force that keeps it in this circular motion. And the force that is responsible for keeping this object in circular motion is the centripetal force. So if, for example, a force is needed to keep an object in circular motion, without the force, the object will move in a straight line. It will move with a tangential velocity to the circle of V. And the force that's needed to keep this object moving in the circle is known as the centripetal force. And in circular motion with a constant velocity and a constant angular velocity, the centripetal force is constant and will always act towards the center of the circle. And this force, centripetal, gets derived from center seeking. All right? And the centripetal force is usually not defined as a single force. However, on the left example, it can be seen as a single force because the tension in the string which provides centripetal force is the resultant force acting on the object, assuming that there's no mass. However, in the right diagram, the resultant force is of the tension and of the weight which acts towards the right, towards the center. And that resultant force is the centripetal force. All right, so centripetal force is not necessarily a single force. It is the resultant of the forces acting on an object that is moving in circular motion. All right, so let's look at some equations for defining centripetal force. So if we were to look at the forces acting on, say, a horizontally moving, a horizontally moving object in circular motion, the centripetal force, which is the resultant force, We'll also have an acceleration. And remember, F equals ma. Whenever there is a resultant force acting on an object, there will be acceleration, right? And always, this acceleration will act in the same direction as the force because mass is a scalar quantity, okay? And in the previous video, we looked at some equations for centripetal accelerations and we know, knew how to derive them. So these equations are a equals v squared over r and a equals omega squared r, okay? And we know that these forces are the resultant force acting on an object when it's moving in circular motion. And a resultant force is always equal to mass times acceleration, or what's f equals ma that we are more commonly associated with. And therefore, we can just simply plug a into this f equals ma equation using the second law to give us f equals mv squared over r and f equals m omega squared r. All right, so these are the two essential formulas for centripetal force. So here is an example, here's a crucial example of centripetal force in action that requires other branches of physics. And this is an example of a satellite orbiting the Earth. So giving more detail, so now let's further describe our situation. What we're basically having is a satellite of mass m orbiting around the Earth of mass big M with a constant radius of orbit of r and a constant velocity of v and a constant angular velocity of omega. All right. So since we are, should only consider the gravitational force of the Earth on the less heavy satellite, because the gravitational force, which is the same either way, but since the mass of the Earth is so big, this gravitational force is negligible. But the gravitational force acting on the satellite is not negligible, as we can see evidently. All right, so since the gravitational force is going to provide the centripetal force, and we know that gravitational force, according to Newton's law of gravitation, is equal to G big M, M over R squared, and this force has to be equal to mv squared over r because there's no other forces acting on the satellite and therefore the gravitational force is the resultant force and hence it is the centripetal force. We can further simplify to give a more simpler ratio that is gm over r is equal to v squared. All right, and this is an essential formula when we have to calculate variables such as the mass of the thing that we're, we're orbiting around and the radius of orbit and the linear speed of orbit all right so here are so apart from so apart from the more commonly tested gravitational acceleration we are going to look at some few others such pedal acceleration situations that we may occur in our test questions the first one being a conical pendulum which i will discuss in other videos the second one would be vertical circular motion with a constant 
well, linear speed, and that is the same as for the Ferris wheel example on the right, and they both have constant angular speeds also. But the harder example is vertical circular motion with variable speed, which I will talk about in another video. So here are three quick summary ideas that we will take away from this video. So the first one is that centripetal force is the resultant forces act in an object that is moving in circular motion. Remember, it's the resultant, and it's not necessarily a single force, except when it's just a tension of the string moving in perfectly circular, perfectly horizontal circular motion. And then the point number two is that when we combined the idea of resultant force and the centripetal acceleration which we have derived, we have two essential equations that describe circular motion. And in number three, in commonly tested questions that involve planetary orbits, the gravitational force provides the centripetal force. All right? So thank you. So thanks a lot for watching my video. I really hope that you enjoyed and found this video informative. Please like and subscribe for more. Thank you.